because I would have not said that this many people would have shown up today. <laughs> and I especially appreciate all the choir being here for those of us who are uh, going to be blessed by your music. I've heard we've got a sampling and we will truly be blessed. Just a, a word about our church family. I received a text about six this morning that Don Campos' father, Raymond, has passed away. So please keep the family in your prayers. Uh, we were supposed to be showing a, a, the movie The Way this afternoon. The weather forecast is terrible. And I've spoken with one couple who intended to stay and watch it. But are there others who would uh, <coughs> like to do that? Or do you, would you rather go home today? If you, if you were planning to stay and would still like to, raise your hand. Okay, well, we have enough that I will, uh, I will move on in the fireside room about uh, noon, somewhere between 11 and 30 noon, I'll make the announcement of the fellowship time, and um, whoever, uh, whenever it's finished, somebody turn the TV off, and we'll have it so that you just have to leave, and you don't have to worry about anything, okay? Um, so, we have been given a challenge by the home conference of the uh, Kansas City Chiefs in the Cal Nevada Conference. They, uh, it is a food off before the, the Super Bowl. Yes, we're inviting us to collect food to feed hungry people. Now the good news is we were already planning to do that and we have a place where it can go. So I've decided, I've, I've done this in other churches, and it's a fairly easy way to, to uh, collect food, and specifically soup. We're doing a Super Bowl vote. So you're going to have two boxes next week. One says San Francisco, the other says Kansas City, and you vote with Kansas soup, who you think will win. So it'll be in the narthex. You can vote as many times as you want. <laughs> the more, the better. The only thing see, we need to do before you put it in with the rest of the stuff is weigh it. Sure. And then we will share that with the conference and see which conferences are successful in um, winning the Super Bowl. Now, the problem with Kansas City is it's two conferences both the Great Plains Conference and the Missouri Conference. So we have to double our efforts. So I asked, I uh, do you have a preference for the soup you need in your, your food pantry? No. Any soup will do. If you want to make it so that's something they can cook with, you know, cream of chicken, cream of mushroom, that's great. If you want it something that they can heat up and eat. But bring your soup. And my guess is if you go to the hospital, they have a whole lot of them. Chicken broth counts. And, 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 and you know, I, we may have to get a bigger box. I'm not worried about that, okay? So bring your soup next week. Or if, you're, you know, if you want to bring it during the week, we'll make sure it gets voted properly. All right. Um, Trent. As most of you know, I'm the team the ambassador. For my project, I choose or I chose Corporal Charles Obama and the Second Profile Troop Support Program, or MTSP. This program was started by the siblings of Corporal Charles Obama. After he passed in 2008, they started packing care packages for the military troops. They had pack many packages ranging from 50 boxes to almost 300 per packing unit. I have worked with this program ever since I was six years old. I've always wanted to host my own pack. So with the help of St. Paul's Church, we're going to have a pack on the, 25th, or on the 25th after church. Please help by supporting this event by donating goods. Also, monetary money is needed to help pay for the postage of $25 per package. I hope to see you at the February 25th pack. And for the donations, thank you to whoever has already donated. 
there's a donation list in the bulletin, and then uh, the donation card is in the back over there. Yes, thank you. Are there any other announcements, Steve? Ah, the Lenten breakfast. Don't forget, Lenten breakfast starts two weeks from yesterday on the 17th. Uh, if you want to sign up to provide food or help, we have things, and we have all the speakers now, yes. And the last know you're coming, so we have some idea how much to prepare for you, okay? The other thing, this Wednesday will be our second healing service, the one in... Um, December was so successful that people said we'd like to do this again. Uh, it will not be a long service, but you will have an opportunity to receive prayers for healing in mind, body, spirit, or relationships. So all of us can use some healing, even if you're praying for healing for our world. And then um, February 14th is not only Valentine's Day, but it's Ash Wednesday. So I hope that you will, uh, before you head out for dinner, you will stop by and remember um, this other, the, the great love that God has had for us as shown in Jesus. I'm sure there's something I'm forgetting, but it's either in your newsletter or in your bulletin. So I hope that you will check those out. Aubrey does such a wonderful job with our newsletter, and we are fortunate to have that. Right, let's prepare to worship God. If you will sit, put your feet on the floor and hands in your lap and take a deep breath in. Breathe in God's peace. And as you exhale, breathe out all those distractions that keep us from worshiping God. Breathe in God's love. And breathe out all your worries and cares. Let's continue our worship in music. <laughs> sang a song to me uh, it goes uh, why doesn't it rain on Kit why doesn't it rain on him if rain makes the flowers pretty then why doesn't it rain on him he needs a storm so with that with a little enthusiasm let's join together in our opening prayer let us pray gracious God hear our songs Gather us in as one people, 
that we may worship you as one body. Heal our broken hearts and bind up our wounds that we may come to your presence healthy and whole. As we seek your wisdom, help us to discern your goodness as we honor the power and glory of your love. I invite you to stand and sing hymn number 133, Leaning on the Everlasting Arms.
many signs of God's love and reconciliation with one another. and sisters in San Diego who are struggling with too much water. Keep them safe. And Lord, we pray for all the farmers in our community and, and the dairymen who are contending with a blessing and a challenge. Be with them, Lord. And Lord, we are Remembering those for whom it was too much to get out today. We are thankful that they can worship with us online. But Lord, give them your peace. We like to think, Lord, that we are sufficient. But on days like today, at times when we see the floodwaters rising, we remember how much we need each other. How much we lean on each other and how we need to lean on you. We're going to lift up names here, Lord. Some who are struggling with grief, others who are facing crises in families or with their health. And they are seeing anew that they need someone else in their lives. You promise, Lord, always to be with us. To walk with us through whatever struggles we're going through. To celebrate with us. As the choir just sang, you rejoice in us. Help us not to forget that. To remember not just during this hour on Sunday morning, but all through our days and all through our weeks that you are ever with us. And Lord, we pray for Cassie Layton, who has both a celebration and a concern. She gave birth to baby Sophia. The baby, baby Sophia came too early and is now in the hospital in Sacramento. So we pray that she will grow stronger and that her doctors and nurses will know how to help her. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. We pray for Doug Horn, who is recuperating from surgery. And we are thankful that his first scan came back clear. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. And we pray for the healthy family at the loss of Ken. Prayers of comfort for Richard's cousin in the Netherlands. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. We pray for Randy and Don Campos, who have lost Raymond. Lord, hold them close, and may they feel our prayers, holding them up. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. And Lord, we pray for ourselves. See us safely home. 
Let us help one another in whatever ways we can. We pray these things in the name of your Son, who taught us to pray, saying, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. <laughs> time in the service that we dedicate to the children among us and for the child within each of us. So at this time I'd like to invite up all of my friends and the leaders to come and join me on the steps. Good morning everybody. It's nice to see you all on this blustery day. So it's the start of a new month. Miss Katie, what does that mean? I am faithful. Thank you, my dear. So this month we explore the word guide. What is a guide? And what do they do? Annabelle. Perfect. Someone that shows you the way of where to go. Perfectly said. So I brought something today. I know you guys like it when I bring things. What is this? What is that? A flashlight. How does this flashlight guide us? Shows you where you're going. In the dark. Very good. Very good, Miss Scarlett. Yeah. So it helps us to see in the dark, right? Lights a path for us. Very good. So a guide is someone that leads you somewhere, am I right? Someone that, that shows you the way. And in this case, being a good guide means that we are shown the way, right? Shown the way like the light of Christ. It's kind of the idea, right? Does God want us to be good guides to each other? He does, he does. So how can we be good guides? How do we do that? that again. Ooh, okay, so places we know, not places we don't know. Is that what you said? Okay, very good. Who's kind of our ultimate guide? Well, it's kind of an easy one. Is God kind of our guide? Kind of our main guide? Mm -hmm. So how do we shine a light for others like Jesus shines his light for us, right? Do good. Do good. Do no harm. Be kind. I think that's the best way, right? The best way that we can show people how to be like God is be kind. We don't do evil, Scarlett says. We don't do evil, you guys. Okay? Very good. So do our behaviors and our decisions help others to see God? Is that being a good guide? Yeah, that means the things that we do reflect God. Absolutely. So our lesson today focuses on a guide for prayer. And that one I think you guys might be familiar with too. How many of you know the Lord's Prayer? Mm -hmm. We say it every Sunday, huh? All right, well let us celebrate one another.
Hello friends, I'm Samuel. Let's wonder together. Today we're going to be talking about the Lord's Prayer. Jesus talks about prayer a lot, so we know that it's really important. This prayer is special because it's the only time in the Bible that Jesus gives us specific words to pray. The Lord's Prayer is Jesus' way of offering a guide for prayer. Did you know that all of us can pray? Prayer is for everyone, and you can do it by yourself or with others. God wants to talk to all of us. Prayer is not about performing in front of people or having the perfect words to say. Nobody gets an award for the best prayer. We're all invited to talk to God and have a relationship with God. Friends, prayer is so important. You can pray for yourself, your friends, your family, your community, and your world. God cares about all of it. There is a lot of different ways to pray. Sometimes you can pray by just sitting and breathing, focusing on God. Other times you might take a walk through nature or sing a song. Maybe you want to write a letter, draw a picture, or read a poem as prayer. All of those are great ways to pray. If you're having a hard time finding a place to begin, the Lord's Prayer is a great guide. It can give you some words to start with if you're having a hard time thinking of what to say. My favorite part is that the Lord's Prayer connects us to the same words Jesus prayed. When we say these words, we are connected to Jesus and so many other Christians who have prayed the same prayer. In different parts of the world and in different languages, people are praying the same words that I'm praying. It feels comforting knowing that these words connect me to God and others. That is so cool. Now it's your turn to wonder. Now, we come to a time when we remember who we are and who God is, and we bring to God our gifts and our offerings. Let us worship God with our tithes.
as we will hear in a few moments, you took loaves and fishes and multiplied them for, to feed a multitude. So may these be our loaves and fishes that you bless and multiply to be a blessing to a multitude. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now let's remain standing as we're able to sing together, bind us together. this story in his book about arriving at a hotel late at night after a conference. It was quite late, late enough that all the hotel restaurants were closed and the room service had shut down, but he hadn't eaten and he was hungry. So the only place open close to his hotel was a Burger King that was open 24-7. But at that time of night, the only thing that was open was the drive through His problem, though, was he didn't have a car. He take the shuttle to the airport, and it was right there. He didn't have a car, but he was hungry. So he decided 
he would walk through the drive through But there's a new problem. One that some of you young people won't understand, but all of us of a certain age will. Do you remember how you used to get the attention of people inside when you went through the drive through There's that hose, the pneumatic hose that stretched across it, and when you ran over it with the car, it dinged inside? Well, that's what, that's, this was old, long enough ago, that's what was there. He couldn't get, when he got to the place to work, he couldn't get anybody to notice that he was there. And thought about how to get the workers inside to see him if he didn't have a car. So he saw the hose and they gave him an idea. He would jump on the cord and it would break. Then he had the next problem. It seems he didn't weigh enough to make the cord react. He describes the situation. Nothing, nothing, nothing. By this time I was jumping up and down with as much force as I could muster in my suit and tie and holding my briefcase. I stopped, winded. I must have looked like a man who'd been in a fight. My shirt was untucked, my tie was over my shoulder, my hair had become unkempt, one pants leg had rolled itself up to my knee. It was not pretty. Can you see him? Well, so can someone else. It turns out that two employees from the Burger King had stepped outside for a break, and they had been watching him the whole time. Now, how would you feel if you looked up to see these two guys? Yeah, like uh, most of us at first, he was very embarrassed. Then he had another idea. He said, come on over here, guys. And the three of them jumped up on the cord, and what do you think? Ding! And the voice said, may I take your order? <laughs> As Shane reflected, alone, he was not enough. He could not make that bell ring, no matter how hard he tried. But, as the Beatles remind us, he got by with a little help from his friends. You know, I have lived alone for more than 30 years, and I can get most stuff done by myself, but there are times when I cannot, or perhaps the better word is should not. When I had returned from England and was moving back into a, a church in Houston, I had given a lot of stuff away, and I had decided it was time to buy a new TV. Now, this is in 2002, and if there were flat screens out there, they were so expensive, I couldn't afford them. I was after those old, old ones, which literally you cannot give away now. Those of you who ran nearly new probably know what I'm talking about. If someone came in with one of those big TVs, you didn't want it. It was nothing but trash. Well, back then it was not. It was... It was important. I'd got a nice big one. And I wrestled it into my little SUV from um, Best Buy, and I took it home, and I had a few steps to get up to, so I wrestled it out of the car, and I lugged it in, and then came the next problem. Because you know how they pack the TVs with all the styrofoam, and there's a suction, and man, it, it was a hard time to get that thing out, but I finally did, and I got it set up, and I opened the instruction books to make sure I was connecting everything right, and the first thing it told me is, that thing weighed 92 pounds. <laughs> I quickly realized I had done some serious hurt to my back. Enough that I ended up having to see a doctor who gave me pain meds and muscle relaxants. Because in the end, I was not enough, even though I like to think I was. You know, as Christians, we make very important statements about the nature of God. And one is that God is three persons in one. That God exists in relationship and community. Shane describes it this way. A relationship so close that it was like an intimate dance. All the, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit are described as three unique persons of the Trinity. They need each other. And that need is so powerful that they are one. This 
This is the image in which you and I are created. We are not created to be alone, but in relationship. And the first relationship is with God, which, if you think about it, is amazing in and of itself that God wants to be in relationship with us. And then the second relationship is with each other. As John Dunn so famously said, no man is an island. And even when we are stranded on a desert island, we crave connection and community. Do you ever see the movie Castaway with Tom Hanks? Where did his companionship come from? Volleyball named Wilson. We are not meant to be enough all by ourselves. We still like to think, though, that we are independent actors. That, that's, that's our goal when we raise our children, isn't it? We want to take this baby, like baby Sophia we just talked about, who is totally dependent upon us for their survival, and, and to grow them until they become self-sufficient adults, able to care for themselves physically, emotionally, and spiritually. If you can do that, you have been a successful parent. This is the opposite of what we want in our relationship with God. See, we have, God wants us to move from thinking we are independent and self-sufficient to understanding that we need to lean on God. That we are interdependent with God and with each other. So one day... Jesus gives his disciples and us a lesson in what it means to not be enough and to need others in this passage from Mark. The apostles gathered around Jesus and told him all that they had done and taught. He said to them, Come away to a deserted place all by yourselves and rest a while. For many were coming and going, and they had no leisure even to eat. And they went away in the boat to a deserted place by themselves. Now, many saw them going and recognized them, and they hurried there on foot from all the towns and arrived ahead of them. As he went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion for them because they were like sheep without a shepherd. And he began to teach them many things. When it grew late, his disciples came to him and said, this is a deserted place and the hour is now very late. Send them away so that they may go into the surrounding country and villages and buy something for themselves to eat. But he answered them, you give them something to eat. They said to him, Are we to go and buy 200 denarii worth of bread and give it to them to eat? And he said to them, How many loaves have you? Go and see. When they found out, they said, Five and two fish. Then he ordered them to get all the people to sit down in groups on the green grass. So they sat down in groups of hundreds and of fifties. Taking the five loaves and the two fish, he looked up to the heaven and blessed and broke the loaves and gave them to his disciples to set before the people. And he divided the two fish among them all. And all ate and were filled. And they took up twelve baskets full of broken pieces and of the fish. So like last week's story of Zacchaeus, this is one that many of us learned as children and we've heard sermons on. But Shane offered uh, some new insights, I think, about what Jesus might have been doing here. I want us to think about them. In a couple of weeks, we're going to be talking about Jesus tempted in the desert. Do you remember the, that story? He's been fasting for 40 days and 40 nights, and the first temptation is to turn stones into bread to satisfy his hunger. I have no doubt that Jesus could have done that. 
He could have rained manna from heaven. But he didn't. He told the devil that man does not live on bread alone, but the very <laughs> word of God. And now, as the crowds were coming, I have no doubt that Jesus could have turned the stones around him into bread and fed all, everything they could eat. But he didn't. He tells the disciples that they should feed the people. And they rightly said, who, us? What do you have, Jesus said? Five loaves and two fish. That's probably not enough for one of them, but alone this crowd. And they were right. They didn't have enough. Not by themselves. Jesus took the bread and blessed it and gave it to the people to share. He used what the disciples had and then multiplied it. He showed them and through them us what it is like to know. To know that you don't have enough, that you aren't enough. But that God can take what you have, who you are, and bless it and multiply it. And more often than not, Jesus does that through the people around us. We need God and we need each other seen that over and over as churches I have served have surrounded people in crisis with love and support. One of the most unique examples I encountered came in England when I was there. One of the women in the congregation had had a recurrence of her breast cancer and it had spread to her brain. She was part of a Bible study group that had become very, very close. And those women took care of her. Now, like most of us, if you asked her what she needed, she would have said, oh, I can't think of a thing. So her friends just didn't stop and ask. They showed up. She says that one day her front doorbell rang, and there was one of the women from the Bible study standing there with a toilet brush in one hand and a bottle of cleaner. And she said, I'm here to clean your toilets. And she did. I have a book written by a rabbi whose five-year-old son, imagine five years old, suffered a catastrophic stroke that paralyzed him from the neck down, but left his mind completely intact. Every year he knows that the Jewish synagogues read through the first five books of the Bible, and at the end of each book, the congregation says, be strong, be strong, and together we will be strengthened. He reflects, we must remind ourselves frequently, strength comes from the support of others and the support we can lend others. His son went through school, even obtained a degree in fine arts. He was an exceptional artist, yet it took great effort to get him there. And once there, his mother and a nurse had to stay there with him to help him. One of his professors commented, we all need someone in the room with us. Shane had been called to the home of a family whose daughter had died from cancer. There was another pastor there also, and the mother asked that question that, everyone in grief asks. Why? Why my child? Why now? Why? It's a tough question. I get them all the time and I hate them because no answer ever seems adequate. This other pastor had one I could see. He says, I, I don't know why and I wish I did, but I do know this. I know the one who holds the stars in the sky. I know the one who makes the tides roll in now. I know the one who sees sunsets and sunrises from a cosmic point of view. And I know that same one who moves the universe into place knows me. And I know that the end, at the end of each day's journey, God holds me in the palm of his hand, but better yet, in the shadow of his love. I know God knows you and knows your pain. And God knows that right now you are nowhere in near enough 
to handle this. God sent us and these other good folks so that until God can answer these questions for you face to face, you will not be alone. For one thing I know more than any other, the same God who claimed us from the moment we were formed in our mother's womb is with us every moment after. I may not be enough, but I know the one who is. I once asked the congregation, how has this church helped you through a tough time? One person said, when my husband died, I couldn't imagine going on, being an only parent, carrying daily burdens. The congregation lifted me up and carried me until I could go on. Another said, our son was diagnosed with cancer. We were both teaching and did not know how we were to make repeated and frequent trips to the hospital for radiation treatments. We were relatively new to the church, so we were very surprised to learn that if a church committee had made up a list of drivers to take him to the hospital, we learned of this when they called to get his schedule. Now, it turned out the trips were not needed. Nevertheless, we were deeply touched and have loved the congregation of this church ever since. No, I am not. I'm not strong enough, or wise enough, or kind enough, or any other enough you can think of. But making life matter means that I know the one who is. And as Paul says, I can do all things through him who strengthens me. And with a little help from the friends, he gives me a long way. Be strong. Be strong, and together we will be strengthened. Amen. Our closing hymn is the Servant Song. As you are able, I invite you to stand as we sing.